Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Olivia. How are you all doing? Uh, so I'm very sorry, I've been missing for a while now. Um, so today I'll come back and I want to do a color along with you guys. I'm going to do a um, something a little bit a little bit simple, but I'm going to do real time so I hope you guys will enjoy that just like a little apologize for my missing and I'm going to use polychromite today because uh, I has been using Prisma colors in my tutorials and col colors along on YouTube for a while and I uh, heard you guys saying that leaving in the comments saying that you guys really want to learn more about polychromite because it's really difficult to find uh, polychromite tutorials on YouTube uh, for some reason so I'm going to do that and the page uh, the illustration we're going to work on today is this little corner right here in the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly book by Jun Hanna Bassfors. I thought this one is really really cute and it has great detail for us to um, learn about polychromite but also really simple and it won't take a lot of t your time to do this and so um, I think this is a great page to, to do a colors along um, so I can do slow with you guys so now I want to show you a technique um, to cover the light art. I really want to cover the light art in this um, for this one. But again, if you don't want to cover any black light art, that's fine too. Uh, I make two videos on how to cover light art. Um, it's a really great information in there. If you want to check the mouse and see uh, what kind of technique that suit you but today I'm going to use a technique that I wouldn't call it technique but it's going to be a lot more simple because I'm going to do background as well so I'm not worried too much about the detail um, that I have to be careful so I'm going to use the Windsor and Newton gouache this one is a designer gouache by Windsor and Newton brand you can use any gouache um, if you want to the cheaper version the cheaper brand white gouache usually they have a little bit of white tone I tried the Arteza gouache and they actually pretty good so if you can find them use them otherwise any brand will pretty much do uh, you can use acrylic as well but like I say in other of my video I is not something that I really care for um, not really fun of acrylic in in this uh, particular technique of covering the light for some reason so I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit a little bit of this um, just this much but because I already have a little bit on my palette oh, I know it's dry but I can reactivate with water and usually if you when you're painting of course you don't want to do that but because we're just going to cover it's just a base so I don't mind and if you're going to use fresh wash out of the tube just a little bit will just tiny tiny bit depends on what um, page or the illustrate illustration you do usually the bigger pa uh, page you are probably need more but uh, for this very tiny so don't need a lot now I'm going to reactivate and um, just add a tiny bit of water I can't even tiny tiny bit of water you don't need a lot of water because if you have a lot of water it will dilute the wash too much and it will not as have oil pick as you want to but you don't want it to oil pick because then you can't see the light at I'll show you what I mean so for example you have this wash here now you are going to do like a cheat so I'm not going to like sit here and drawing in like following the liars or whatever that going to take me too long so I'm going to just color, <laughs> basic colors it in um, 
so I'm not worried about it too much now you make sure when you do this make sure you adding in a flat layer so like, something like this as you can see when you add it down it look quite opaque but later when it try you can actually see the silhouette of the light underneath through so it will make easier for you to see things around now this technique only I find it work the best if you're not going to do any background work uh, if you're going to do sorry if you're going to do some background work for this and we are going to do so so that's why I don't worry um, if you don't do background work and just concentrate for the illustration uh, go for <coughs> something a little bit detail way you, you can do like in the the brevet video that I show you you can just you know draw follow just cover the layer itself like this so or use postcard pen with um, what's this what was the one I use postcard pen and in no intense <laughs> I can't even remember what I did okay so if you're going to do that use that technique we're going to do background for this so I'm not going to worry and also if you're planning to do background with salt pastel this is not going to work well as well because you can see all the ink around it it will create texture and when you add salt pastel on top it will show where you have the paint underneath and it not look very good so you can see this technique is very fast you you don't have to be precise with uh, brushes or whatnot and you can just cover everything but come with that is you have to kind of do the background for the whole illustration that you do that's why I make like different videos um, about covering black light for you so you can choose which technique uh, you want to use depends on what kind of result you looking for really so I just put this on uh, what good about this is as you can see it's a little bit yellow as well because the paper just simply really white so it will have a little bit of yellow cast like a creamy yellow cast um, on this on the paper but don't worry too much and, and you can see now after the pen kind of dry you can see all the light at back you can still see it uh, don't mix the pen too opaque like if you add too much uh, too little water it will be more opaque and it end up like you can't see the black light at three and will be difficult for you to color you know and if you feel like or oh, you you want the black light is more dark white um i mean black light more faded wait for it to dry first and then apply another second layer that way you less likely to risk ripping off the paper because like i always said uh, coloring book water uh, paper is not for watercolors or you know, any water medium so it can happen if you're not careful but if you're careful um, you can do like mixed media, uh, mixed media on any illustration it will work fine so now I'm waiting for it to dry of course it will buckle your papers a little bit but as you can see it's not like a whole lot like when you add whole heaps of water so that's fine if you still don't like it's buckle like this um, iron it after I did show you that before did I so you put two paper one on the top and one underneath and just set your iron on really really low heat and just 
slowly gently iron over it and it should be flat if you worry about that technique and was scared to ruin your paper just uh, I guess you do this step before you go to sleep right? and then just put your book close your book and put like heavy object on top and then just go sleep and in the morning it should flatten now so I will let it dry for about like 15 20 minutes and I'll go back and then we can't we will start to coloring in this one okay let's start with the flower first now I think these flowers look like daisy so I'm going to go with daisy and let's do the middle part of the flower first and I'm going to pick out some of the yellow because I'm pretty sure the middle of the daisy is somewhat yellow um, and it's have some sort of really nice and bright yellows as well so I'm going to do that let's see these are work okay okay so I'm going in first with the light cadmium yellow now all the colors will I will put down in the description box so you can check it there and for this yellow I let's do this one first I will go in and just add it now now I want to leave um, the top here it's a little bit bright so I'm going in with the ivory this one ivory of course it's a bit hard to see because the the bridge is, is bright too so I'm going to add in a little bit of bright ivory and then I'm going in with the dark navel ochre just a little bit down here And don't worry, once you're adding in the um, the layer of gouache, it give more tooth for the paper so your pencil can go on even more easier and you can add more layers. So don't worry about it that you have like trouble to color. The only trouble is um, you might feel it's different and even with the polygrammer, it can create a little bit of pencil dust. You know? so that's the only problem that I find it's not really a problem it's just different so you go back with the light cadmium yellow just to blend out the navel ochre and, this one. and then I'm thinking about adding in this green right here this one is an earth green yellowish I noticed that the daisy have a little bit of green around at the you know the end of um, the petal so I'm going to add that in just a little bit so you can see a little bit of green there overall it's quite a slight middle so I don't think you need to add it in too much I'm going to use a little bit of brow though let's see maybe this brow the pista oh this one is a raw umber raw umbers and you can see right here I'm going to just add it in like so like like texture so I just going to add in, in like a little dot around and that is pretty much it now for the flower itself I'm going to use the green first so I have green and I'm going to adding these colors out for all the petal and you can see I didn't really care for the the top the tip of the petal because later I'll show you a technique that you can cover the tip and make the flower look really nice and bright but that would be like the end process this one is just the beginning now you have that I'm going to use the ivory and blend out the green okay. 
and I you can sort of like oh it didn't really completely cover the light arts why go all that effort to do this it will when you adding in the background because you can see now it's really really blurry already so when you adding in the background around it will cover the light art but like I say that's why this technique only work when you use when you complete the entire background if you don't go with some other technique that you can completely cover it okay all right now we have that I'm going to adding in a little bit of warm gray and the warm gray that I'm going to use is a uh, warm gray number five And I'm going to add just a little bit like that, just at the bottom. And this is our shadow. I got really, really light brushes. Of course, it will look like the flower is dirty, but don't worry, when you blend it out, it will look really good. And once you like done everything, it will look really nice. because at the moment of course the the flower colors is darker than the paper because the paper is bright white so you can't really tell this is a white flower uh, but once you add it in everything all the backgrounds and whatnot you the the flower will be more brighter than the background and that is when it look better now I'm going to use the white but I'm going to use white from the Prismacolor I love the white from the Prismacolor uh, I love Polygramo but the white from the Polygramo is not as good as the Prismacolor I love the white from the Prismacolor so you can like blend everything so that's why I like to use them together now you just add it in and blend out everything Let's say all right now I have a little bit of my green here I'm going to adding in just a tiny bit down the bottom of each petal just around here adding in a little bit of colors and I'm going to use the green to blend out bring back the yellows a little bit because we did blend everything out with the the white so of course you can't really see and then I have the earth green yellows and just bring back the green up here In. We are done with the first flower. I know it's not exciting colors, but I have a blend because we're going to do a quite dark color background. So I don't want this is dark as well. I want it somewhat nice and light color. And sometimes you think simple colors it actually work really well. Okay, now I'm going to just do this one exactly the same way you do the other one. We so have yellow little bit of sorry ivory to make it nice and bright and then a green yellow is around like that i'm going to use a light cadmium yellow to blend out that i'm going to use a raw umber to adding in little dot inside and then green for the petal of course you can do daisy different color too I'm pretty sure daisy come with many many different colors ivory
and then the warm gray number five now you can see I'm when I'm adding in the hot the shadow I just adding in one side on the edge only depends on where you want the light go add it on that side so if you the light come from above here I usually do the shadow because let's say all the light come from everywhere right so from this side the light will come from this side so the the shadow will be on the right edge go really light to reserve the colors because if you bring out this color too much uh, the, the gray too much and also if you make it too dark when you blend out with the white everything will just look like mud so make sure you go really light and gentle it's like just like you change gently touch the paper like barely touch it okay now bring in the white You can use the technique and all the color that I'm using in here you don't have to use for this page but you can use it for other page okay now I'm going to use a my green adding in a little bit around here okay and then I'm bring back in the cream a little bit And adding in a little bit of the earth greens around here and of course the ivory okay now I'm done with that let's start doing the mushroom so for the mushroom I want it to be like an orangey red color so I have yeah let's see we have the terracotta um, a little bit of pale geranium black and I want the middle cadmium red so one is really red and then normal red a little bit like a earth earthy orange and my form there I'm going to have use this the dark cadmium yellow I know it's such a small little mushroom but I use like four colors very extra hey okay let's start so I'm actually going in with the pale geranium leg first because this is like a middle color to transition the dark really dark red and the really dark uh, really earthy orange so let's start from this one so i'm going in so around here i'm going to leave those you can color it as well if you want to because later we just bring back with the the white gel pen if you want just you don't have to worry <laughs> for this one okay really fight it out like that and then I'm going in with the middle cadmium red which is a dark red 
you know what I'm just going to color it and then I just bring back those little white specks with the gel pen okay there you go and then I'm going in with the terracotta adding it down laying in nicely with the red as you can see and then I'm going in with the dark cadmium yellow which is a nice um, a little bit orangey a little bit yellow still and then I'm blend everything out with the ivory perfect I'm going back in with the petroleum just to blend a little bit you can go back a few times blend it out until you happy with the result there you go I'm really happy with the color um, transitions now for the mushroom pork bottom mm, let's go with the raw amber yes let's go with the raw amber and I'm just adding in a little bit at the bottom here very light I am not going to make too much color put too much color and then I'm just adding in a little bit of ivory and the ivory will blend out the raw amber as well and we have the little brow on the bottom I'm just going back in with the raw amber and make it a little bit darker like that and see very nice right and then I just use the white very nice and gentle to blend out everything there you go very cute now if I'm going to do it later but let's do it now um, white gel pen and then we just add in back oh. just testing my gel pen and then we add in back the white dot and they're so cute I love coloring mushroom now let you do the same for the other one pale geranium light as well just you know, just a base color so you make sure when you use polychrome you don't go straight in and adding as much as you want at the start because then you can't blend and all the um, the position where the transition will show you more obvious this one is a terracotta you can always always go back and adding more layer so go live first and then this one is the middle middle cadmium red I don't really know why I call middle because to me it looks pretty really dark then I just go back now with the pasturanium in the terracotta and I'm going to blend a little bit in with the dark cadmium yellow and let everything out with the ivory there you go okay bottom bottom is a raw amber I just go in one side but you can go uh, all the bottom, like half of the bottom. Just leave a little bit of, you know, area to blend it out. Because if you look at the mushroom stem, usually down at the bottom, it will be a bit more darker. But it look almost like translation as it's go up to the stem. So that's what we're doing here. And you can see all the dirt coming out. That's why I blow it. I don't like to use my hand. Sometimes I still do that, but like 
you shouldn't do that because it it might match everything okay now adding back in a little bit of the raw amber just to give it some definitions a little bit more shadow and I'm bringing in the white of our beloved Prisma colors and just blend everything nicely. I go quite light pressure with the white too. There you go. Now you have the second mushroom done. I'm going back in with the white. There you go. And then you have it, two little mushroom. Very nice and very cute. Now, let's do the stem for the flower. I don't remember what the stem of the daisy look like, but maybe we just go with... Hmm, hmm, I have the chromium green oil pig here. And I just adding in just one side. You can see I left a little bit of white on the other side. You want to, you don't have to. Now I'm going to sharpen up my pencil a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use the ivory and I just blend out the side that I didn't add in the dark green now i'm using a little bit of the my green and i just use that to blend out the the chromium green i pick even more and i'm going to use a little bit of brown let's see mm, use a one of brown okay one of brown and I'm going to add just at the bottom like that not too much and there you have the stem really simple I'm not doing anything extra with it I'm going to adding in a little bit of brown here as well there you go You have your stem right there. Really simple. You do the same for the other one too. Okay. Adding in my green. Then a little bit of water brown. Because I just see like flower stem, usually they have a little bit um, at the bottom. You know, just a little bit of brown at the bottom. And then mostly of the stem is pretty green. I like that look. Just use the ivory to play now. There you go. Now we have that one. Let's do those little um, one right there. I just want to do really quick and simple. So I'm going to use the my green, adding in a little bit of color for them, and blend it out with this one is a green. I'm pretty sure. Add the stem in and maybe use a chromium green oil pick and just add a little bit at the stem. So just have some colors for the grass. Um, I'm going to use a permanent green olive. Mm, permanent green olive? Actually, let's try the pie green. So I'm going to use a pie green, adding in a little bit down the bottom. 
This grass is very tiny, and I. At the bottom. And then I'm going to use the earth green yellowish. Blend out that pie green. If you really want to, you can do that like with exactly the same way. Do this. This one is pie green, right? You can add more breads yourself. And earth green yellowish. There you go. See, you add more breads yourself if you want to. So now let's get going with the leaves right here and I want to make it look a little bit like more on the warm green. So the green I pick first. Let's see what we have here. Um, I'm going in with the chromium green I pick just a little bit. So I'm going in for the inside first. And because as you can see it's kind of cover the black light art so I will leave the outside as like a really light uh, area and as you can see I've sort of faded out just a little bit right here and I want super gentle with this okay now I want to just go with this one I want to add a little bit of permanent green olive like this And then I want to go in with the my green. Okay. And lastly is the ivory. And I use the ivory to blend everything together. can see it does create a little bit of dust okay and then I'm going to use a little bit of olive green yellowish just a tiny bit at the bottom here okay now for the at the back, I'm going to use the chromium green I pick again, set right on the edges, and I'm going to use some my green, blend it out. I still leave a little bit of white, and then I add an in the ivory just to blend everything out together there you go now I'm going to use the olive green yellow is and just add very lightly on the edge like this so I'm doing that I'm going to use the ivory and blend the rest like this there so you have a little leaf right there so you're gonna do the same with these all of them and then we're gonna do the same color but like work through the stem okay 
Now, for this leaf, of course, the light was still from above, so I'm gonna leave the largest areas which is right here. So this one is a green opaque, no, green chromium green opaque. Go quite light from the star first. Okay. Quite relaxing when you're doing this with the polygram. Eh? You don't have to uh, think about it too much. Okay. Permanent green volume. And you can do this, this color. Um, with other brand or pencil, other brand you have as well, so you don't have to use polygrammer if you don't want to. I'm pretty sure you can find this color in any other brand of other pencil. Okay, my green. Always leave a little bit of light this area here and add a little bit of ivory I find this technique except um, what is it? what I was like I find this technique work really well in cut up paper that you find that it's a little bit hard to Put your pencil on to have your pencil light on top because sometimes cheap paper are very very smooth. Uh, you can add a nice light layer of just gouache on top, and you can see it create a really nice foundation for the pencil to grab on. This one is a green yellowish, pretty sure olive green yellowish. I'm going to just go back in with the permanent green olive and cut the blend out a little bit. Let's also do it up here too. A little bit of my green too. If you don't have the ivory and you don't want to use the ivory, you can use the white from Prismacolor. That's blend will blend really nice as well. Okay, with the same green yellowish, olive green yellowish, I just go on the edges. Let us say, and then later we can go back in with the ivory and just blend so we have the little gap in each of the leaves i just thought it looked a little bit nice if now you can of course don't have to do it this way because we already covered the light so you can start this color right at the edges so you don't have to leave a little bit of frame around it if you don't want to yeah, okay, I'm going to bring this color a little bit down here because why not? Okay, let's do the other one first. So, I hope you had a great star. Oh, New Year so far. Um, I have been really busy and I actually finished my first double spread for this year. Um, also in this book as well, The Ivy and Inky Butterfly. I did one page, I started one page, the half press, um, half of the spread for my patrons so if you're really curious 
I'll leave the link down below so you can join Patreon and do a colors along with us if you want to. And then I was like, oh, I really like how the page turned out. So I just decided to do the other spread as well. So that was really fun. We do the cherry blossom. I haven't do double spread for a very long time now. I think the last double spread. I can't seem to remember when the last double spread I did. I found that was really quite in intimidating because you know you're gonna spend a long a great amount on it and I like to do um, I get bored easily so I like to do other pages different pages I like to do small sections so you can finish it fast know that I'm a lazy and impatient person now that's why I always try to find an easy way to do background <laughs> ivory It does require more layer when you do uh, this way with that gauge underneath because you just have you know very texture underneath not very but like more texture than the original paper is so you do have to go back and forth with, with the layer but is bring out the color better it you can see it very strong colors and I found that is just some color lay on top really easy as well. You don't have to go as uh, put too much pressure on. And like the light layer, like the ivory, usually if it's just a normal, the normal color, it can be hard to see. Uh, but with this way, it shows a lot more. So I do really like it. Okay, you can see I do these leaves, but I'm not gonna do any of the color on this side of this stem because I want to keep it nice and bright. I'm going to use a chromium green opaque now and I'm going to blend out the stem here a little bit just a tiny bit and a little bit of my green a little bit a little bit on the top too now going in with the ivory and we just blend out everything like how we did to the same as well Now I have that, I'm going to find my 
walnut brown okay I am going to add a little bit of the walnut brown just a brown color on here also on here as well okay and then I'll go back in with the mic green and I'll blend it out some more now why I'm going back in with the mic green and not with all the green because the mic green is the largest color so you can blend the darkest color out while still keep it's not going too dark you know but that is my reason and I'm just kind of like twitching and adding more colors as much as I want this one is just a brow still Blend it out. Okay, ivory now. Keep it nice and light again. That's the beauty of this technique. You can just go back and forward a lot more time than usual because it's just more for you more for your pencil to grab on so you can see i can easily create something like this really easy there you go so i'm really happy with how that leaf turns out of course you can adding texture on the leaves you know you know oh sorry just adding veins using the darker colors that invents and whatnot but I'm not going to do that I think that just look right but before moving on to a different leaves I'm going to use the black okay I'm just going to use the black from the Prisma color because I have it right on my table now I wanted to draw to not draw but like color in the black ink I don't read this book um, but I do read it sometime to see like what the things uh, John Hannah draw so you can see I just adding in the black really nice and black no nothing's fancy okay so that's the black ink I'm pretty sure okay and later we're going to add like the lighter colors maybe we now we're adding a little bit of white on here just have a little bit on top only and then we can use the white chair paint on top later but yeah it's just like that for now because I'm pretty sure ink is pretty light I don't want to add too much colors now let's do these uh, leaves right here and I because the the background I want is somewhat like a cobalt two colors uh, blue so I thought it maybe look really good with the earth gold and oranges so I'm going to do that for these leaves right here and I want to start off first with the yellow ochre and let's start it from here so I wanted to make it like treated at two separate uh, sections so let's try here okay you can see I put it down um, actually I put I use about medium no medium light pressure it's really light and as you I faded it out as you go toward the uh, the middle vein and you do exactly the same for this side there you go and I'm going to use the navel yellow and I'll add it in plain out the yellow ochre very light brushes as well Okay. and then I have a little bit I'm going to use a little bit of gold green gold just a tiny bit there make it a little bit darker 
the green girl still have a little bit of green in it that's what yeah, green guy <laughs> so I'll add a tiny bit of these colors in and then I want to use a little bit of the terracotta now the terracotta I'm going to just lightly add it in at the bottom and a little bit on the tip here A mistake. So, erase that. Okay. Now I'm going to use the ivory, and I'm using this color and blend everything out. Now, as because you added in, it kind of blend out other colors too. Now I'm going in with the yellow ochre and just bring back some of the color. Okay, a little bit of green gold out here, and the navy yellow. And then I'm going to use the terracotta and just do for the back for this bit right here. Okay. Very easy, right? So you have that little leaves right there. And you're going to do the same with this one. Now, because it's down here, so you do the same as well. The light come from this side. So you're going to have maple yellow, uh, yellow ochre, and also here. the yellow navel green gold Going to add a little bit of the terracotta in. A little bit up here. Okay, ivory. Just repeat the step and enhance the colors a little bit. And there you have it. The leaves. This look a little bit more like a uh, autumn leaves, and there. There. I really love how that turns out. That look really beautiful. Now I'm going to use um, the green gold and add that a stem. There you go. And then I'm going to use the navel. Add on the other side. There. So that is our stem. 
and uh, for this one right here I want to do it green so it doesn't have glam of just and plus they kind of different now. actually uh, let's do one of the leaves like this one maybe we can do red like the red of the mushroom so I'm going to use reuse some of the red of the mushroom so now for this one for that one right here um, you can use the, the the color that I'm going to use for these these two red leaves or you can use just for that one so let's start I'm going to use first the terracotta mm, I think it would be really nice if we just add one right here or maybe two <laughs> very indecisive okay use this one then let's start with the terracotta right here okay and then I'm going to have a little bit of pale geranium geranium leg right at the bottom just blend out with the terracotta now I'm going back in with the terracotta and blend that some more out and then I'm going to use the navel yellow right here and the ivory so you basically do the same for this side but because it's so small you don't have to do very much you can also make the leaves a little bit darker using the middle cadmium red as well if you want to and because I have the red on my hand now I'm going to add it in for the vein like that and of course you can use the <coughs> terracotta to blend out the red just a little bit like that and then you have your leaves. I'm going to use a little bit of ivory too. Now for the middle vein, I actually going just to use the terracotta right in the middle. And a little bit of that middle cadmium red light just at the bottom. There. So you have that leaf. You're gonna do the same for this one. So, terracotta. This one have a bit more room, show a bit more room, so add on the other side too. Navel yellow. Terrain pale geranium leg. Just a little bit. And I'm going to add the middle uh, camera red just on this side a little bit. And I'm going back in with the terracotta, blend out the red, and adding in for the middle vein, the big vein, right? And ivory, blend everything out. And you can use a middle red, middle cadmium red, to add it in for the vein. Very light pressure. I kind of adding in a little bit. Go from the middle out like that. Just blend out with the navel yellow just a little bit. I want a bit more yellow. There we go. So you have those two. Now let's do this one green. And I want to just do it simple. Um, don't want to do anything difficult or much. Permanent green olive. Okay, I'm going to leave the middle. white it's gonna 
to both sides and then I have the my green blend now okay and then I'm going to use the ivory and go in the middle like this it might look a bit messy now I just go back in with the migraine and blend out the colors a little bit and now I'm going to use the pie green a little bit on the edges Just going to use the ivory and blend out some more, and then I'm going to use the exactly the same pie green, and I'm going to add it in for the vein of this leaf. Beautiful. There. So that is our leaf. I don't. <laughs> so that is all the leaves that we've done. Now let's. Zoom out a little bit to see what we done here. Okay, so I think now I'm going to just do the mouse. Now let's start with the um, mouse, and I, I, well, the mouse is I really want to do it brown. Um, I was thinking about doing the mouse gray and black, but I do think. It's the, the gray and the black might look a bit too much so I'll, I'm going with the brow so I have the Vista color first here and with this color I'm going to mark now where I want it to be the shadow like mostly colors and where I want to leave some area white so let's start with the face first um, let's maybe do the ear first and I will just add in this here. I go quite light pressure because we're gonna have a lot of other layer on stock on top. So I'm going to just add it in. Make sure I leave a little bit of around the eyes here. So I'm just to mark a little bit down there. I'm going to add around here so for this layer you mostly just add out a nice even layer doesn't need to be um, a lot of colors or whatnot just need nice and even color so I'm going to make this area wise as well so I'm going to leave that I'll add in this here this now for the body going around here okay you can see we leave we just color on this side no it's at the start it just doesn't look really nice now so for the arms I'm going to just add these colors around right here like that and for the middle arm middle app the right left app left arm I'm go around here as well to leave a little bit of the highlight over there now for the leg now for the leg I'm going to leave a little bit of the light areas around here okay, let's do there 
we go quite light like this. Yeah, so you can see we have the colors down first and we roughly know what we're going to do. Um, now I'm going to use the burn sienna and with these colors I'm going to add in some area that this is a little bit on the red side. So I'm going to add the area that you would think oh is doesn't make sense to add in this color but I'm going to add it in some of other area so we can have a range of different brow behind the ear I'm going to add around here as well Now for the body, I'm going to add a little bit around here. this area here Add on the leg. I leave a little bit of the area around the leg here to keep it white so we can at least make them look like it's separate. Okay. Now we have that. I'm going to start just adding in another line layer of brow, and I think I'm going to use. Um, the brow ochre I just also go quite light as well everything about this is really really light Okay, now I'm going to use a burn umber and I will start adding in the um, more darker shadow. So I'm going to add around the ear here. Like that. Around the ear. I go really light with my hand too. And now, because we already developed like where is the area will be, the all the shadows, I'm going to start um, just you know 
using a little bit of fur texture so I need to do it like this Let's just do a rather the next first. I'm going back in with the bista and adding in another layer. I'm going to just bring up the one of the ear as well. Mm. Let me add a little bit in here. Okay. Now I'm going to use the ivory and I'm going to blend all the highlight in just blend everything nicely Don't worry if it's you call over the iPhone that we can go always go back and make it look nice. Right there. Now you can see once we added in the light color, it's kind of make the dark color disappear. So going back in. This one is the burnt sienna and I just start to, you know, slowly bring out all the colors again. But this time, you already have a clear idea of what you're doing, so it'll be a lot easier. You know? This one is the burnt umber. Shake here. There you go. And then I'm just going to use the Vista. Really lightly. Adding back in. Okay. You can see it look like this. After many many layer we added in. Now I'm going to use a little bit of black. I'm just going to use a uh, black from the Prisma color, but you can of course you can just use it from the polygrammer. I'm just going to use this to adding in like the extra shadow and also I'm going to use it to adding in the fur texture in some area and I go really light hand 
you can probably barely see this on camera because I don't create a lot of obvious texture but you can see it in real life when you're doing this like very light when you're adding in fur follow the pattern of the fur Okay, for the eye, I'm going to add it in the eye now because the dot here. Now the nose as well. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of the white gel pen and hopefully it will help us. There you go. No, no, it's too. There you go. Um, I actually want to add a little bit of pink cheek for it, so I'm going to use a little bit of dark flesh, uh, the cheek right here. So I'm going to just add in a tiny, tiny bit, very light pressure, right there, right on the little cheek. Cute. Okay. Now I'm going to use the same. Uh, dark flesh and I'm going to add it in the ear okay just halfway and then I'll blend everything out with the ivory every on this side too and a little bit of vista okay Now I'm going to use um, a little bit of burnt umber inside the ear around the edge here to create the, the deep deepness and then I use the ivory to blend everything out there you go Now I'm going to do exactly the same for the body. So I'm going to use the burnt umber now. Um, and I'm just adding in down here for the end first. And I just enhance the colors. So these and first ivory ivory on this M2 and a little bit underneath. Okay, we'll have going back with Vista. For the bottom here, I'm going to use a little bit of the brow ochre. And I'm a little bit of burnt sienna. to go back in with the ivory make everything nice and smooth 
going to add a little bit of the burnt amber right underneath here along the M. Okay, now I'm going to use the black. You can see I'm going to add it in some fur like this. Okay. Very nice and light. That's it. it for the face up here too. There you go. Then you see I have a little bit of fur. I know I'm not really like the best in coloring anymore but I do try my best. Okay for the body adding in the ivory first and rewrap the leg as well I'm just going to adding ivory up the other area that I want to be light now okay back in with the pista A bit of burnt sienna. I want to keep the upper here a little bit light so it won't interfere with the back leg. I'm going to use a little bit of burnt amber I'm going to add a little bit of shadows around here And I'm going to make this area a little bit dark. Just going all in. Make sure it's nice and dark in here so you can show where the leg is. Does that make sense? Okay. Gonna blend it out with the burnt sienna. And the pista. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of raw uh, brown ochre for a little bit of highlight. And then I'm going to just using the ivory to add in the highlight overall. 
think we're pretty much done at this point. We just need to add in the black, which is for fur button. So it go really light, and make sure your pencil is sharp as well. Go light with your hand, or sometimes you can. Uh, make it too too thick of the flick and it doesn't look like a nice fiver like that go around And that is pretty much it for our little rat, uh, rat mouse. <laughs> I'm going to do for the tail now. And for the tail, so easy. Have burn sienna. All the way. Let me leave this. Not white. Not white light color this one is bista in it up a little bit and then i have the ivory i just blend on what half of the side and then burn amber And then I'm going to use a little bit of black. And that is it for the red, for the mouse. <laughs> Now let's do the eyebrow. Oh, actually, there's a hand left. So for the hand, it's actually really easy. I'm going to just use a little bit of bista. For this hand as well. And I'm going to oh after that. Okay, add the ivory. I know it's gonna cover all the finger, but you can always. I'll show you. Okay, I'm going to use the bista again and I just kind of bring back where the finger was. That. I think this color is a bit light, so let's try to use maybe the the burnt amber. Sharpen it up. Just drawing some finger in. And I'm going to use a little bit of dark flesh adding here. I want to have a little bit of pink going up. There. And that is the hand. Now for the apron, I'm going to make it look like a pattern apron almost. So I'm having here, um, I'm going to do the yellow flower mm, yes so I'm going to add it in just a few dots I'll show you what I mean okay so you have a few dots there 
Now you have to use the yellow. Oh, and this is just a dry plus fine liner of Stadler. Uh, you can use any fine liner pretty much. And these are color. This color is very uh, common color, so it's not. And then I'm going to use the yellow to adding in the petal. Now, I'm going to um, let's see if I can find this one. Oh, I think this color so is more like a teal color, and I just adding in light leaves. Like that. There. And now, once it dry, let, let it dry. I'm going to do this, um, the same for up here. I'm pretty sure this one is... Maybe I just do it right here. I think this is a color. Maybe we'll leave that white then. Okay. So, my, while we let it dry, um, let's to go into the the what is it called the ribbon so I have here the light petal green and hmm, this color actually when it dry it looked different than the cap I didn't even notice that so I have a little bit of this going on mm, right here in around here around here okay now I have the emerald green and I just make it a little bit darker And then I'm going to use the ivory. I know I use the ivory a lot, but I just think it's it's a really nice color and easy to use. Okay, and this oh, a little bit of highlight. Just go back in with the em em emerald green and you know adding in some detail. Do you want for up here too? Now for this little color, I'm going to add the ivory as you can see, and then oh, you know what? Maybe I just use it yellow. So I'm just going in with the navel yellow. Let's make it yellow. There you go. Now for the overall colors, um, you see there's some area that left still. I'm going to use the terracotta and I'm just adding it really lightly between the gap of the white paper still showing through. This very easy. Now I'm going to use the white from the Prisma color. Oh my god! Pick up the brow. Oh boy! Be careful. And I'm just going to lighten up the area. Like this. Now you can see, it's take off a lot of our detail of 
the flower so I, I just come back it with the far liner and refile it if you have the darker yellow probably a little bit better choice for this I'm going to use the pink again bring it back and then we do this just add a little bit of texture there you go now for all these leaves I'm going to use a emerald, em, emerald green and you know like just adding in a little bit of color at the end of each leaf to decide it that it is a leaf and that is pretty much it for the apron let's see if anything else I want I really want to make it look like it's have Mm. like a little bit of uh, maybe I'll just use a fine liner where's the brown well, maybe this will do so I have here which is like just like an orange orange tree brown and I'm using this you know to adding in back in the uh, the sewing line and that is pretty much the uh, the outside now for the pocket I actually was thinking make it the same uh, but before that let's adding in the terracotta first because at the start we're adding terracotta later so I think it would probably easier if we add it first just adding in a little bit of terracotta and then using the Y and then I blend that out like that I'm actually going to add a little bit of the terracotta around it to make it look like it it's have a little bit of shadow but like just a certain subtle shadow so it's not too much color going on and it will look like the the pocket is a little bit puffier than you know it looks flat okay now i'm going to use my pink and the yellow green and then I think I'm just adding around here is green as well and I've just used a pink to put a light make it look less make it look more noticeable emerald green for the leaf and that is it so that is everything um, oh yeah the tail right here so for the tail let's do it pink or should we do yellow mm, I'm thinking now let's do it like a pink so I'm going to use a dark flesh and I'm just going to add it in like that I follow this the jaw line the drawing line like that and then I'm going to use a nice uh, pink let's see I'm going to use a little bit of maida Adding in right here for the seam only. Just make it look a bit darker, and then I'm going to use the uh, uh, the ivory, and I'm going to blend everything out. Like 
I'm just laying everything out. Um, I wanna make this look like it have some ink on the, the tail and maybe some black in here too because you wipe it well she wipe it so it should have some stain on the tail right and then going back in with the, the dark flesh and just kind of make it have a little bit more color in ivory let's make it a bit darker yeah and that is it um, for the tail let's add a little bit of pink here too okay so that is it oh the leg the feet I didn't notice this feet okay vista vista ivory Walnut brown, and uh, not walnut brown, burnt amber, right here, there you go. and then I'm going to add a little bit of the brown ochre. And a little bit of ivory. Should we add a little bit of black on the neck? There you go. So we are pretty much done with the whatever on there. The uh, the light us. Now let's do the background. Okay, in order to do the background, I am going to use these uh, Faber Castell Albert Duro, which is the watercolors, the watercolor range. And I'm going to do that because, as you can see, we still have the gouache very visible, <laughs> as you can see. So um, I don't want those you see you know you, you I don't want that and so I'm going to stick these watercolors and hopefully we can get rid um, of the grass uh, of the the, the liar so I'm going to do the grass first and I have I'm going in first with the permanent green olive now you can find exactly the same color of the Avadira in the polychromo set itself so if you don't want to use the watercolor you can just use the pencil uh, but do not use just soft pastel because as I say it will still show these unless you do a different method or unless you don't even cover the liars then yeah, let's go ahead oh wait before I do that I want to do something I want to use a burnt sienna you see these leaves right here I want to add a little bit extra colors in them so I'm just going to go with the burnt sienna and adding in a little bit of colors in here so it look a little bit darker okay Okay. okay now I'm happy mm. I look a lot more um, pop 
poppy pop <laughs> the color pop a little bit more now okay okay I'm happy with that now okay let's move on to do the grass now I will need um, a water pen as well let's use this one okay so first I'm going to use the permanent green olive and what I'm going to do is you can see these right so I'm going to just adding in a quick layer down so it doesn't you don't need to add a lot of pressures using this okay I'm going to leave some area a little bit light as well I'm just quickly add this color that we like almost like mixing colors at this point okay now I'm going to use the um, my green no earth green yellowish and I'm going to just add it in here make sure when you're adding these colors down um, just like how you use ink tan if you don't know if I, I have a video colors along using ink tans um, I put the link down below if you want to use them and learn more but the only cautions that I need to tell you is when you're adding down the color just make sure it's a flat layer so no scribble like this let me see. So you don't do this you don't leave gap between them so make sure you go with light pressure but it has to be even you know just end out a nice even layer and that will help you when you blend because the what the paper is not watercolor paper so if you do just scribble it down it will uh, sometimes leave the mark still especially this white will work better when you have like a cheaper uh, quality brand where it's not dissolved completely sometimes it can still leave the mark the pencil mark behind okay emerald green oh where is it oh no 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 emerald green sorry chromium green opaque okay so this one i'm going to add a bit darker Now this uh, you can just add random is I don't have a reference for this. We pretty much just add down like a base layer and I want to have different color going on so it doesn't look flat. Okay, I even want to add a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to use the light cadmium yellow and just adding in a little bit down here to make it a little bit brighter. There, so now I'm done with that. Let's uh, blend it out. So I have the water brush here. Now I'm just going from the light area first. Actually, I need to put the paper underneath this. I don't want it to blend through. because we go into blend all the color so I don't really worry about um, you start off with the light area or the dark area because we all blend them anyway 
and once you when you're adding these uh, use a water brush drawing just keep rubbing at the same spot uh, move them around and you can be a bit slow with this watercolor because it's watercolor so it's you can reactivate it with water so it's a bit more forgiving I think than the intent the intent you have to work fast because it's dry really fast so if you work slow it can leave the area the transitions area so it not won't it won't be to look as smooth as this one and you can see we blend all and even though they're all blending nicely you can still see some areas a bit darker some area a bit lighter so that was re really interesting and of course the paper will be going to be a bit buckled but uh, you can iron it i'm gonna do it at the end for now not worry about that too much so let's do it for our background up top so i'm going to have I'm going in first with the blush, blush turquoise. Okay, try to see what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to do a gradient. So it depends on how you like. You can do whatever you like, but I'm going to do a gradient. And again, I'm going to just add that a nice layer. like that and you're gonna keep it almost just up here Uh, don't worry much if you don't um, you can't get a nice even layer because we go back in with pencil okay I have that I'm going to use brush and blue worry about adding in a dark layer as well just a nice even layer down like I said like that. of course if you do the whole page you can you know extend it a bit more but I'll just do like a small area right here Okay, emerald green. Oh no, petal green. Petal green. And it down. And I try to overlap the colors a little bit as well. Make it blend a bit better. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to do my green. a little bit and then at the very end I'm going to adding in the light cadmium yellow 
So the yellow at the bottom. You can see it look like a mess still but you can sort of imagine what the color going to be now I'm going to use my water brush again and I will need a tissue to dab off the excess so I have one right here um, this is just you know the facial tissue now okay let's start I'm going to start from the light area first this time because I want to keep the light area to be light so let's start from the yellow And you just slowly blend it out. Okay, let's start from here. Okay, kind of like out of track now. <laughs> you can see I don't. I'm not. I worry that it's not going to be even layer uh, because I'm planning to adding in pencil afterward. But if you don't want to add pencil after uh, you can see it still look really nice and even uh, but you have to work in a small section it usually easier to work in a small section and get an even layer than like a big section so and this what the brush that I'm using is from Pentel. You can see this area. Right. So I was talking about how this flower, um, when I going in with the watercolors. I have to be a bit careful with them like not extra extra careful because we're gonna make use a technique that I was talking about from the start remember how I told you that I want to make them look somewhat more whiter so that is we will do that but it have to be like at the end once the background done so be careful with them a little bit but you don't have to be extra careful just keep the you know, the petal you can still see the petal so don't let other colors go on top too much if you actually have the water go on top uh, clean up your brush on the tissue and then just like 
go back to it and then just dab it because you can leave watercolor that way with clean water Let's start from here now. Oh, and the reason why I told you guys that drawing use too much pressure when you apply the pencil is this because when you use a lot of pressures, you you add more pigment, and more pigment mean you need more water to make them look even and more water <laughs> means your paper will gonna rip and it also more pigment is be a bit harder to make a nice layer as well I'm going to make this area look We nearly done. Okay, so I think we did pretty good with the watercolors now. I don't want to add more to it anymore. So I will let it dry. You have to let it dry before you add the pencil on top because you know when it wet, you add more pencil on the pigment will will not stick, will not stick, and you tear the paper. Okay. So while we wait that for dry, let's do the rest first. Now because we have the same polychromate in the um, in the normal polychromate than the uh, I don't know what to say <laughs> we have the same colors with the watercolor in the normal polychromate so we're going to use them I'm going to have pomegranate green olive um, Chromium 
chromium green oil pink and the earth green yellowish okay so we have those three and I pretty much just going to go from here and adding in grass so this one is the permanent green olive and I'm just going to add a layer of grass there When you're adding in grass, make sure you go like curves instead of just dry it up because sometimes it is a lot easier. You know, it's not a lot easier, but it is look a lot more natural. Let's shoot one side first and I'll show you what you can do the other side the same. Chromium green I pick and what I do yeah, I add it down at the bottom of the grass that you already added in with the chromium uh the the per permanent green. Now, let's let's just do this area, all the, all of them. There. Okay. Now I'm going to use the old green yellowish, and instead I'm at the grass. I will just colors the you know the background the base color okay while I'm doing this I'm going to add a little bit of the light green because the light green we're adding in a little bit of highlight and you can go over them it doesn't matter Let's just do this part first and let you see how nice it will look after you're done. Okay, so you have that. Now I'm just going to adding in more grass. And, and the pie green. Where is it? Oops. Pie green. Now the reason why I'm adding pie green is you remember this grass that we add up here? It's have a little bit of pie green in it. So you add in this so it doesn't look like they alone. I'm just doing this area. And that's pretty much you're gonna do for this area. If you want it more dark, add a little bit more dark color. I'm going to use the chromium green opaque there here, just adding in a little bit more darker color. to use the permanent green to add it in down here it's all about layering 
that will make it look nice so you can see it's a lot darker now now I'm going to um, use my yellow Posca pen if you know me I love like little grass so I'm going to use this Adding in a lot, a lot of little grass. You can use a white gel pen as well, but the reason why I didn't use the white gel pen is I want to concentrate the white into this flower. So. here okay you see so now we can do that for the rest of our grass and it will look really nice once we're done the easiest way you can also use I like to add the grass first you can also add the base color first so when you're adding in the base color you can use um, the chromium green opaque first and then you can you can just add in down some area first but with this the reason why I don't do this is once you're adding in the pencil it will have less um, texture for you to go on top with the grass and the grass might not look as nice and as defined that's why I'm going to do it this way so I'm going to just do the whole thing And I will do it, and then we'll come back, and then we do the uh, the top background. Okay, so I have done the grass, everything. Uh, now I have the white gel pen, and I will just adding in some of the just like this for a little bit of white grass. Of course, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just thought it will. Uh, usually, I like to add it in. Just just add a little bit of nice touch to it. And there you go. Now I want to add a little bit of shadow, so I'm going to use a uh, pie green. And for this, I'm just adding it there, like so. you see like that very simple going quite light we have these like that and then you do for the mouse as well adding in some shadow There you go. I'm really happy with how that look. Um, you can use a little bit of black too if you want to, just adding in for like extra shadow, like right at the end here because the shadow usually quite dark near the objects. So you can 
do that. Just using black. Now the reason I why I adding in the shadow like after I do all the grass because then we have all this texture on top and look very natural, and I like the look of that. There you go, it's all done. So we have the grass done, look beautiful. Now let's move on to the the top half. And what I'm going to do is very very simple. I'm going to pick out the color exactly the same again as how the the blue watercolor we add down so what do we have we have a blue turquoise i'm pretty sure blue turquoise um indigo blue a brush and blue and green uh i think it is a petlo green petlo green Mm, earth green yellowish we have that already or oh, my green I think it's my green my green and the yellow the really light yellow there you go so we have all the colors right here where we have them and uh, before I'm going to do that I'm going to draw in a few white circle let's see if I can find them okay so I have the white from the prisma color so i'm just going to adding in some really nice and gentle white color i'm not breasting uh breasting the pencil very much just adding in some circle now the reason why i'm adding in the circle first is because after you adding in the pencil these white will not go on top nicely so you want to have them first When you color it, just leave them alone. Now we don't need a whole lot of these, so I'm just adding in a few. is enough okay you can see I have these circle down of course it doesn't look like anything and it's look kind of funny now I wanted to adding in the padlo green first and I will start from here. Actually, hmm, I think this color actually closer to this one than the padlo green because sometimes after you mix the color, it's changed to a different color. So maybe I use a little bit of light padlo green first because these are really light. Really nice and light with my pencil as well. You don't need to brush the pencil anymore because you have the colors underneath already. So all you do is make it look, uh, add a little bit more colors and make it look a bit nicer, more even. So you don't really, really need to brush your pencil. And I think this is such a great way to do background um, when you're lazy like for me I don't want to sitting here for days just to do a background sometimes it's really fun and a lot of colorists enjoying that um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I like to move on to other project quite quickly so for me 
um, I like to find a way that I can do quick and easy and still get the most effect like the nice effect that I that I want to without using too much effort <laughs> Just going to add these colors in. And like I say, I don't really press the pencil that much. Now, we're done with that. I'm going to add a little bit of my green. I'm thinking about either using my green or we can use this color right here which is a light green maybe we try that yeah that's look really nice so I'm going to use the light green leave the purple alone clean it out See the area that we started adding in pencil, it already looked really nice. And you're starting to see all the black light are disappear. Right? It just look like it doesn't have any black light anymore. And you can see the white flower starting to stand out a lot more. And you understand why I do that at the start. Sometimes it can take it can stay at the ugly state for a while and still it looks somewhat like nice um, so I feel like it need to be patient and then I'm going to use a light cadmium yellow and I'm going to add it in for the yellow at the bottom I love these color combinations from green uh, from blue to green and yellow it just looks so nice and this is a fairly easy blending combinations too there's these different color combinations sometimes it can be difficult to blending you need a lot of layer to make they all look nice because color is quite far from each other on the coloring wheel but this color is like basically next to each other so I'm pretty sure you like have no problem blending these done with that now I'm going to use the uh, petal green now and I'm going to add it in for the top here I go with really light pressures again. I love using polygrammer and I feel like because of thanks to the polygrammer, I have really good hand control with the pressures of my pencils and stuff. Because the, for the polygrammer, you need 
really change your hand to um, achieve the certain colors or certain effect that you want to that you can't really achieve it if you just go in straight like full brushes so that's why I'm really thankful for them that you know sometimes those pencil touch you a lot that you never really think of because you kind of um, change your way changing the certain way you do things to suit with the pencil to bring out the best of the pencil that sometimes you didn't notice that because of that you it helped you to improve other skill as well okay I have done with that I'm going in with the blue turquoise And I'm going just the same. I go really light, especially where it the transition between the two color. Course you can adding more pressure if you want it to have more darker colors but I'm always pretty much always go live first before I, I go back in and adding more colors if I want to You can see this area already look quite nice together. I'm going to use the last um, brush and blue, the blue for our last colors. Pretty much up high here. So if you don't want to blend out the color this fast, go with something a little bit. Um, you know, you know, condense the colors a little bit so you don't have all the color this far up. I'm going to lighten it out as you go up here because you still want to kind of fight it out. Go down here.
Okay, I'm not gonna worry about these around here too much. I'll show you how I treat these edges to look, make it look more smoother. Now go back to down here. I'm going to use the white to enhance um, some of the white here. It's going all full speed now because I know that it's good. And beside from that, I'm going to use the deco yellow from the Prisma color, and I'm going to adding in some yellow bubble. Cause it would be a little bit boring if we just use white. And I think. Yellow go really well in this case too. Okay, now you can see we have all out done. Now I have the gel pen, and I'm basically let me zoom in. Then now I'm basically just to go over these petal and just cover the tip. And I'll show you how I make them look a bit more natural. We basically just like defy the petal back to what the shape is supposed to be because we done a lot of things with the background and everything and sometimes the other colors kind of cover on top. This petal. Okay, so you have that. Let's do this one as well. Yeah. You have that. Why you let it dry? You have to you have to let it dry like a minute or two. Also, um, I'm going to just use my gel pen and add in some more. Just little dot here and here, here and there. That look a bit funny. I'm <laughs> going to add it on top of the ink as well. Okay, just a little bit of in some of the Why not? Okay. I'm really happy with that. Now let's go back in with the Y from the Prisma color. Have to clean up the tip a little because have all of that green and yellow and blue. Now you can see I'm just going to really gentle scratch off the white. So it's it basically just try to make it blend in with the color. And you have to do it quite gentle. So you don't basically like scratch off everything but just a little bit. You can see now it's look like it blend in one and you can see it here you can see the edges where it stop so basically that's what we do and I would advise you to use a blunt a blunt pencil don't don't do it with the, uh, the the pointy one because then it will basically scratch everything this way just scratch off some of the areas so basically you just smooth out 
the transitions where the gel pen stop and that's why we adding in the yellow at the star around here remember to make it look nice so even the white it still have some colors there you go so we have it that was yellow flower and let's zoom out now you I'm usually well uh, I'll show you how you can do that um, to make the seam of this pencil look more smoother if you're not really good with your hand pressures and you can't really control it to make it nice and smooth and blend into the white I have a trick for you I use artist soft pasta any soft pasta will do uh, but the artist one usually it blend in with the pencil a little bit nicer but of course you can just use other pasta uh, any pasta will pretty much do the job for you and I pick out the color that's similar to the colors of this so let's test out some of the color I think this one will do what is this one mm, cobalt blue I think we need something in the print blue maybe I think this one will be a bit better yeah so I have because this one is a uh, artist so it's have names on it uh, the the cheaper one or the quality one usually they don't have name on the sofa so but basically just test out you know on the piece of paper swatch out to see if it match your pencil and oh maybe I do form the lighter color first well that's that's obviously the better way to go so I have the yellow oh my god and I basically just adding it down here like that very simple now go up here I have a somewhat more a teal uh, petal blue so I have this color right here and you probably thinking oh my god what I do now I'm going to adding in the blues up here too So now I have a bigger mess. <laughs> now you can see, but it's like similar color, uh, the soft pastel. Okay, now I'm going to use my finger and I just wash, I just blend out the colors like that. And then use this one as well. Um, let me find my brushes. Yeah, have my brushes. Squatch it. <laughs> it's a little bit dusty too. Okay, let's do this one right here. I use like three different finger. If you have the wet tissue next to you, just wipe your hands off, and then you can be. It can be a bit easier can see basically just blend it out now why I blend with my finger and not with cotton pad or makeup pad like I usually do because the finger will the oil from the finger will help the color blend nicer and it will keep the oil pick of the 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 soft pasta as well usually if you use a makeup pad it pick up majority of the soft pasta and sometimes it's not as opaque but because the pencil are already really opaque you want something a little bit more opaque than you know just using the normal uh, pencil uh, the normal way to do and you can see with this way you can make it look a lot nicer and just blend it all out and make it all smoky and smooth as if you use your pencil 
and it worked really well, really well. And that's basically what I do. Now I didn't really careful around here, but you can see um, it's leaf. I can show you a little bit. Now from far away you can't see, but when you zoom below, you can see like this edge here. That where the water stop. And if you, that's why I show. I told you like you can't use salt pastel right on top of the page of the bead that you use the gouache because that what will happen and it's even worse because the wash is a lot more opaque than the watercolor and that is pretty much done now you want to cover up this bit this bit that have a mistake what I usually do I get my eraser and I adding in some purple around it and the purple will act as you know just a little night addition and it will draw the attention away from your mistake is that is that a fun way to cover your mistake you know any mistake have a way to to stop uh to, to fix it but people just didn't know <laughs> really really done with this now and this is what the page look like you can see all the seam look a lot more nicer of course you can do a better job than me I'm sure um, and I didn't really do the grass right here as well <laughs> which is quite dumb look at that but yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you have fun I hope you learn something new I hope you have a good time and I will see you again in the another tutorial of course I have to like iron it to make keep it down there you go um yeah but I'll see you soon in the meantime take care and happy coloring bye and before I end this video, I just want to send my big thank you to all my patrons who are supporting me. Uh, if you guys want to have access to more colors along real time, uh, step, step by step with more advanced technique, please consider to join my patrons. And uh, I also have like colors uh, pages on this as well. Yes, and that's it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.